think about it, man can sleep with this woman and this woman, this one, and then you meet a good woman and you want to make sure that her body count is low, but is that fair? Because I can step in a room and you have 15 women that you slept with that I don't even know you lay down with. And how does that, how does that look on my part? But when I find out, how is that really going to make me feel that everybody that had a piece of my man? Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Okay, so I was um, 21. And I was, I was promiscuous out in these streets, okay? <laughs> And uh, I moved here, like moved to Tennessee, really. And I met this older man. And really, in my mind, I was like, well, I've never been with a man that old. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try it out. <laughs> and I was not trying to have no kids with him. I really wasn't trying to have no kids at all. Right? That's why I said sometimes, even though I came up in a good home, I was like, yeah, I don't want to be responsible for, the, for another human being. Just because I've seen, my mom did foster care, daycares, all of that. And I was like, I, I just, I need a break for somebody. I need a break from kids, right? And then, you know, but I was out here having unprotected sex. So obviously the consequence of my actions and not closing my legs was I got pregnant, right? And for me, I'm not out, out of touch with reality. I was just enjoying sex with this man. Like we would talk, but... I knew in my mind, like, I didn't see a future with him for real, right? And I was never one of those women that wanted to be in a relationship because I got pregnant with somebody's kids. Like, that's an insult to me. Like, if you didn't find that you wanted to be with me before me getting pregnant, then later on, if we ever got, when we got together because of the baby, later on, you'd be like, well, I did you, I did you a favor by being with you. I didn't leave you because you, you know. I didn't want to be with you. I, I stayed. I didn't want somebody to ever say that to me. So I was like, I'm going to just stick out being a single mom because really it was my choice to open my legs. And this is the consequence. I don't feel like my son should suffer in a home where there was never love in the first place. It was just pleasure. So that's, that's, that's an interesting story. Like the... The fear a lot of men have is like, even the women these days who were raised in good homes, whatever we classify as good homes, right. still somehow find themselves in the streets. Yeah. So like, what was the disconnect between, I was raised with a father, I was, you know, nurtured, I was raised relatively well, but I still was out in the streets. Like, what, how did that transition happen? My mom was so strict, like for real. I didn't have like BT, like I didn't have nothing. And so I just, when I turned 18, I graduated and I did exactly what she wanted. I was telling my son this morning, I was like, I put on those, I can tell you what outfit I had after graduation. I put on those orange shirts and that tank top and I was in them streets <laughs> because I wasn't able to do nothing. So I felt like I was just trying to catch up with everybody else that was around me. Um, not because I was raised to do that, but just because I felt like I missed out on so much. You were like a PK, like a preacher's kid, like super sheltered. Yeah, like she just, she was like, my mom was not saved when she came over here or when she even had me. And I think in her mind was like, I just don't want her to make the same mistakes I did. But then she locked me in the house. Does that make sense? And so when I finally got free, it was like, oh, I'm going to try this. <laughs> but actually, my son's father isn't a street dude anyways. Like, he's a real clean cut dude. He was a car salesman when I met him. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he has, like, a, a good job. It just was, I, I didn't see him as a husband. What was he missing? For you to see him as a husband, I guess. 
hate her a lot. Like, <laughs> he was missing a lot. He, the communication was like really not good for him, for him to be his age, you know? And I found it weird that he could relate to me with the age difference that I thought we had. Um, but come to find out he was way older than what he really said he was. So even then I was like, how could you relate to me? I'm 21 and you're like 34, 35. Like that's too much, you know? So, so he was older than that. He was older than that. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I thought that that was weird, but he had a lot of trauma that he hadn't dealt with. And I just didn't, I didn't want to be with somebody like that. Not to, you know, anybody that has trauma, please don't get mad at me. But there's things that come with that. And I don't feel like I wanted to be responsible for those things, to be completely honest. So, you know, with, with growing up with a dad who was a former pimp, mm-hmm. I'm sure he put you on game. He did. Right? How to not be one of these girls out here. So while your mom was sheltering you, mm-hmm. what was his take on that because I'm sure on some level he knows that some of his some of his holes either came from traumatic situations or super sheltered Mm -hmm. situations so how did he allow that to still happen he he went to jail (laughs) and that's how that happened so one of one of the hoes you know snitched on him and then he ended up going to jail and so technically I, I think that it was a good stint too if that would not have happened, it wouldn't have happened. Like if he wouldn't have went to jail, like he would have ensured that I didn't escape and you know. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Okay. So in a way you were raised by a single mother. As, at a certain point, because I knew my dad. So like, I would say, cause I want to make sure I get the numbers right. Cause he was there for my graduation. And I graduated early. So he was gone for like five years at one point. And he got out right before my my graduation. Actually, he was there when I left. And he was like, oh, God, what have you done to my child, right? Like, she's ready to escape. <laughs> so he knew, you know what I'm saying? But prior to that, but what I will say, though, is even though I got out in those streets, I wasn't stupid. Right? I didn't get pregnant until I was 21. I have friends that got pregnant like right out of high school or during high school. I was smart. You know, I just kind of slipped up. No, I didn't slip up. I just didn't expect to get pregnant. I ain't gonna lie. (laughs) It's like, yeah, you be like, what? I've been doing this and this ain't never happened. (laughs) So um, I would just say, and I made a choice, but I will say sometimes things are generational. Elaborate on that, what do you mean? So, addiction can look like a lot of things, right? And, um, like, okay, my dad, you know, he was a pimp, of course, right? So he had, like, addiction to women, we would say, you know? Sex addiction. Sex addiction, right? And then a couple other things, right? Before my mom decided that she's going to be safe, she, she had... She had men, right? She had two kids before she met him. Oh, okay. Right? And so, and then my grandma, even though she was married, she had 12 kids. So I'm giving you an idea, right? And some, I would say that sex addiction or just being promiscuous was something that was in my line, right? And there are times where I could be like, I don't know why I'm doing this because I'm really not getting anything out of this but control. Mm. So it was the ability to, I felt I was addicted to the level of control I would have. The seduction. And yeah. The, the, okay. Okay. So, so you're saying that the sex or the actions that, you know, led to having your son mm-hmm. was less about, you know, just the, the pleasure aspect and more about the... Control. Control. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you think a lot of women, because that's one of the critiques men have of women, or you go out here, you do whatever the fuck, and then you want the good dude to like, you know what I'm saying, come and play cleanup. Like, do you think that is 
the case for a lot of women. They're just exercising this newfound, especially after the you know feminism movement and the whole thing, right. this newfound control. Or do you think there's more to it? I think it's more to it. Like I would like to say, you know, men. No offense to anybody. If we want to be honest, um, kind of set the tone for for black women, especially to kind of like push back, right? Or what what women started off doing was. Oh, so now I'm treating you the way you've been treating me and you don't like it. Right? Because think about it. Men can sleep with this woman and this woman, this one, and then you meet a good woman and you want to make sure that her body count is low. But is that fair? Because I can step in a room and you have 15 women that you slept with that I don't even know you lay down with. And how does that how does that look on my part? But when I find out, how is that really going to make me feel that everybody that had a piece of my man? That is, that is a very important conversation. That is, is a very common conversation. So I'm going to represent men okay. in the barbershop. <laughs> and I want you to keep it 100, right? All right. So with that conversation, as far as, you know, sexual promiscuity, men can do this, but women shouldn't do that. Or right. I could be out here and I, I fuck 100 women, but my, if my woman's body count is over 10, like, uh, what men are saying is this. It takes a level of skill. Okay. It takes a level of uh, clout. Uh, ability to seduce a woman to the point of having sex with her. Okay. It doesn't necessarily take skill for a woman to seduce a man because we view it as women are the gatekeepers of it. So it's about, I have to convince you to sleep with me. It's not that you have to convince me most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. So guy who's had sex with a lot of women... Okay. Woman who's had a sex with a lot of men. Mm -hmm. He's good at convincing women. Mm -hmm. She's easily convinced. Mm. Okay. So I think that's okay. why that's why it 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 isn't equal for men and we take it the way we take it because the other piece too is Okay. If I go out here for instance and I fuck 30 women right now. Mm -hmm. And I impregnate all 30 of those women. Because ultimately, one of the foundationary reasons of sex is procreation. Right, right. So that's always a risk. I impregnate oh, all wait, 30 Oh, wait, say women. that again? It's what? always a risk. All right, so it, the primary what of it? The, the primary purpose of sex is procreation. Okay, oh, so we're going to come back to that, okay? Okay, all right. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, from a biological standpoint, that's what we're meant to do mm -hmm. as a species. So I go out there and I impregnate 30 women. I can leave going about my life. Okay. I can leave with my life. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those women's life is now in danger. It is. Because pregnancy and carrying a baby to term and delivering is one of the riskiest things you'll ever do. So they, on some level, whether consciously or unconsciously, signed on to potentially die to clone me. That's not taught, though. No, I'm, I'm just talking about the subconscious. Now, oh, right. in, in, on the flip side, if a woman is out here okay. and doing whatever, mm -hmm. she is subconsciously signing up to potentially die to clone anybody. Right. But I think, like, what you're saying, that, that's fine that you say that, but if we be real with each other... Has any black woman really been taught that? Like, okay, well, when you lay down with a man, you're going to potentially get pregnant and you can die doing so, right? For cl To clone a man that really probably don't want you, wants you, and you don't necessarily want yourself, right? Has anybody kept it real with them like that? I think women should. I think that's where, like, I, I talk about, like, where the female OG is. Because it's, it's not men's jobs to, like, explain that. Because we, we don't understand that as well. Okay, true. So let me tell you what happened. So the other day, you know, the abortion situation has, you know, hit the airways. And I didn't know what was going on. I'm not going to lie to you because I wasn't watching TV. But I just kept seeing stuff, right? 
And I said, Roe versus Wade. And all that yeah, yeah. I was like, I mean, what is like, why are people arguing today? So I kind of did a little thing. I was like, oh, OK, good, good. I'm glad it got overturned because this is going to be a good conversation. I had nothing to do. So I made this statement. I said, if God created sex to reproduce, right, for, for reproductive, what you just said, and you don't want a baby, you don't want to reproduce, then close your legs. That's all I said. And everybody got mad at this me. This is like Twitter? No, I was on Facebook. Facebook. Like I was not <laughs> expecting to get shared and talked about and you don't know what you're talking about. Sex is not just for reproduction. One lady said, I love sex and sex is pleasurable, but I shouldn't be punished with a baby. She said she shouldn't. She should not be punished with a baby so that she can experience that pleasure. Mm-hmm. Let, let's let's not straight let's not stray too far. I'll come back to that. But what's your response to why men view a woman's high body count different than how he would view his? Because what you said was it wouldn't feel good for a woman to walk. It doesn't in the room feel good. And uh, she slept with him. She slept with him. She slept with him. I think men's response would be, "You." trapped me like you were able to lock me down you were able to secure not trap what that's the wrong word trapped? that's the wrong word you were able to secure me right whereas right. everybody wanted me you're the one who actually got right me. but that don't make me feel special you know what i'm saying like i'm in a room with all of the people that you didn't lay down with i guess what you're saying but it doesn't make somebody feel special to know that you i'm walking into a room just like it doesn't make a man feel special like to walk in a room and be like oh you didn't slept with him well and see like, but that's different though because with men, what? it shows you that all those women wanted him. But with men, we don't have to want you to sleep with you. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not as deep that, you know what I mean? He slept with her. He probably don't even like her. But for most, the majority of women to sleep with a man, she has to like him on some level. That's true. And I think subconsciously, it boils down to that biology piece. Like, she has to think he's interesting. He's, he's handsome, he's sexy, whatever the kid. She like him on some level. Well, women fall in love with words. <clears throat> Whether the words are true or not. So if a man is like giving her any amount of attention, and y'all can get mad at me if you want to, but tell the truth, man gives you any amount of attention over a period of time, you're going to develop in your mind that he likes you even if he doesn't. Because he could be texting the same text to a thousand or five other women that same day. But and keeping up conversation with you, you feel me? And so you're thinking that he's giving you so much attention, but he's really giving it to everybody. But because we fall in love with words, because of the lack of validation, and just we just love words, right? Women talk more. We don't listen. Like we really don't listen. So I'm going to say that you might be right, but men know, too, that women fall in love with words. And y'all use those words in, at the end of the day against us because then we fall in love with your words and then we lay down with you. We open ourselves up to you because we feel like, oh, he just listened to us or he messages me every day. And I'm so you're admitting it's a skill. It's a skill. OK, <clears throat> it is. a skill. So the dude who walked into the room. And he had slept with 30 women. Is really good at that skill. He is really good at that skill. Okay, the woman who walks into a room and has slept with 30 men, what is she good at? She is good at falling, what you just said, falling for the words. So it's not the same. It's not the same, but it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Okay, let me use it. Let me use this, uh, this uh, metaphor instead. Person A um, applied to a bunch of universities. Okay. And each university has different standards of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. He applied to Harvard, Brown, Cornell, you know what I'm saying, Princeton, and he got into all the universities. Mm, okay. We would assume that guy is really smart. Right. Right? Now, the university, there's a certain university. And it lets any and everybody who applies get in. 
we would assume it's a community college. <laughs> <laughs> so is it the same to compare a very intelligent person who is able to get into a bunch of universities mm-hmm. or a university that lets anybody in? Okay, well, so then it should be fair to say that there is a double standard in a way. Absolutely. And that women are held to a higher caliber because of the value that we're supposed to have, right? Like, women are valuable to men. Y'all will do a lot to get some pussy. We're going to be real. We're going to keep it. It is important. That's a fact. And, And if you went to school... With a motherfucker who was stupid, who was cheating off your test. Yeah, yeah. And you show up to Harvard on freshman orientation, and you see that nigga there. Mm, I would, I would be mad, right? You throw you, man. You throw your book back down. You'd be I'm like, like I ain't even Harvard. going here. Don't nobody want to go here. That's you like him? That's what I'm saying, and that's why it's different for men. Okay, I mean, I accept that. I mean, I accept that. I do. I understand. But it's still not fair because, okay, I'm going to tell you why it's not fair because then women proceeded to say we can do just the same thing as men can do, right? But we can't. But but we have adopted this thought process Mentality, that we can. Yeah. And I think it's funny because a lot of women that are like pro-women's rights, one, are not of our ethnicity, right? So it's not a lot of black women, but there are a lot of black women in there. But the ones that are really like going for it, they are other ethnicities or white or whatever, but they're married. They're married women. I, and so it didn't make, it doesn't make logical sense to me. I was talking to a lady the other day and she was talking about, you know, abortions and women's rights to do it and all of this stuff. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, but the truth is 60% of abortions are done by women because they don't want to have a child. Right? The percentage is high that we're just being irresponsible sexually. I said, but you're married. Why are you fighting for single women to be whores? And you are married. I'll say this. I'll say this. Um, The standard of scrutiny is lower with white men. Mm. And I think it's partly because... Whatever happens, white men are at the top of the totem pole. Right. So they, they can be, and, and you'll see this with, you know, black women who date white men. They're like, you know, he doesn't subscribe to gender roles and this, this, and that. Well, he has more flexibility in his expression of masculinity than a white, than a black man, because for all intents and purposes, he's still a white man. He's still right. here. He could, he could be the one wearing the apron and cooking the whole nine versus black men who for all intents and purposes, since they got here, have been boys, right? right? It's a lot more sensitive to us. And we are more uh, in need of that masculine validation. Because again, everything around us is telling us we're not men. Exactly. You know what I mean? So when, when we encounter a woman who's still holding us to that same flexibility standard, of the white man while simultaneously holding us to pseudo masculine standards Mm -hmm. that the white men don't have. Like we have to have the big ass dick. We have to make the six figures. Mm -hmm. We have to be the one who can fight and read and (laughs) and use a former gang member, (laughs) preacher, this, this, and that. Whereas the white man doesn't have to do all that. Mm -mm. So unfortunately to a lot of black men, and I think this is probably what leads to the save yourself movement and things like that. It's like, yo, I have <clears throat> fought against the odds to build up myself to be a good dude, a solid dude by any metric, right? Whether it's money or whatever the case may be. I shouldn't have to settle for this. I shouldn't have to, to settle for a woman who thinks she can show up looking any kind of way okay. or acting any kind of way or, or, or talking to me any kind of way. And as much as like I'm, I'm telling men, yo, keep fighting. I don't, I understand. I understand. So like, even with the, the um, body count thing, promiscuity thing, should a Harvard level man, socially, Harvard level black man, should he not be entitled is the wrong word, 
But is it okay for him to want a woman where he feels like, yo, everybody else couldn't get her? 